I open my eyes to see the world. I close my eyes with gratitude. I open my ears to hear another's voice. I let go of what I think of how things should be. I feel the wind or rain or sun. If I make sure that I do, I dance, I move, I take heartbeat shaking actions and beauty I create, I cultivate, I invite. Gratitude, connection, letting go, feeling the earth, all part of the beauty of all that is. Words by Mark Hutchison, adapted. And now Jane is going to light the chalice. Thank you, Marjorie. <clears throat> I'm going to use um, chalice lighting words by Dawn Shea Cooley. And it's entitled Abundance Chalice Lighting. We light our chalice this evening, grateful for the love that we experience in this beloved community. May the flame light the way for all who seek such abundance. Our overall themes this evening are listening, hearing, giving and receiving. I've for a long time been interested in these themes. Most people think that they are good listeners, but are we? I know that quite often I hear rather than listen. And also I'm too impatient. I know that I feel more comfortable giving than receiving. So tonight is a golden opportunity to dig a little further into these topics. Marjorie has researched all the readings and hymns, and my reflections later in the service are based on the work I did during an online inspiring shared pulpit course led by the Reverend Kate Dean, minister at Roslyn Hill Chapel in Hampstead, London, and Janine Sim, a ministry student with Unitarian College and a member of Berry Unitarians. To get us started, here are some definitions based on material from Psychology Today and the Chopra website. The website Psychology Today says about listening that most people believe they are good listeners without considering the important differences between hearing and listening. The ability to hear is typically an aid, but the ability to listen well is a skill that must be developed and practiced. Listening means paying attention and making a conscious effort to process what you hear. In talking about giving, the site says, gift giving is an outward expression of a relationship. And as with any relationship, it can either be enhancing or diminishing. The way in which the transaction is carried out is as important as the content of the gift itself. Here are some quotes about gratitude. Gratitude takes nothing for granted, is never unresponsive, is constantly awakening to new wonder. Thomas Merton. The miracle of gratitude is that it shifts your perception to such an extent that it changes the world you see. Dr. Robert Holden. 
gratitude is an antidote to negative emotions, a neutralizer of envy, hostility, worry, and irritation. It is savoring. It is not taking things for granted. It is present orientated. Sonia Liabom Mirsky. And finally, if the only prayer you said in your whole life was thank you, that would suffice. Meister Eckert. I'm now going to read a poem entitled The Art of Listening. And we have the poet's permission to read this. It is by Veronica Aronson, and it comes from an early anthology of her poems entitled Nothing About the Birds is Ordinary This Morning. The Art of Listening. Hunt out wild flowers, reach out not to pick them, but as an offer of intimacy. Stay open-hearted. Don't put your ear to the ground to listen, the sap or sorrow, so, so, soil. Instead, tune into the words written between the lines. Visible in the way the bluebell, pink campion, stitch word, offer up their secrets, have made themselves vulnerable against pale and dark greens. This is an offering, a last chance to hear this moment's prayer. And now Jane is going to tell us more about our theme for this evening, listening, hearing, giving and receiving. Thank you, Marjorie. Well, it was my birthday in March, and it led me to thinking about the giving and receiving of gifts and the difference between listening and hearing. I'd like to explore these concepts this evening. For inspir inspiration, I have two quotes. The poet Maya Angelou said, when we give cheerfully, and accept gratefully, everyone is blessed. That, of course, is an ideal situation. But I tend to agree with Jesus who said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Hmm, are they both right? Can we receive without feeling we have to give something in return? These thoughts have been whirling around in my mind. I'm on a journey of exploration. Please come with me. Healthy giving and receiving are necessary and important. But I think to be mutually beneficial, they have to be genuinely accomplished with no strings, as Maya Angelou suge suggests. This is when the happiness hormones or D-O-S-E take over. D-O-S-E, of course, stands for dopamine, which makes us feel good. Oxytocin, which encourages social bonding serotonin, which reduces depression, and endorphins, which make us happy. So here is a story il illustrating the concepts of listening and hearing, which I think go hand in hand with generous giving and receiving. Adrian and Carolyn were very close siblings. Both were generous in their Christmas and birthday gifts. Because they lived far apart from each other, they gave each other e-vouchers as gifts. Now, I believe in theory 
that we should be grateful for what we receive, whatever it is. But as some of us are decluttering, being genuinely grateful for something one already has is something not e sometimes not easy. Adrian enjoyed receiving John Lewis vouchers, while Carolyn preferred Amazon vouchers. They had discussed their preferences at length because she was a good listener. She sent Adrian John Lewis vouchers. Adrian was happy and so was Carolyn. It was a win-win situation. Carolyn got the full benefit from the happy endorphins, as did her brother. Now, I'm sure you can guess what happened next. Adrian had only heard and not listened to Carolyn and sent her John Lewis vouchers. The amount was very generous, but D-O-S-E did not kick in for Carolyn. In fact, quite the opposite. Carolyn was inwardly cross, although outwardly appreciative. There was no feel-good factor for Carolyn, but presumably Adrian was happy. At the next available opportunity through gritted teeth, she reminded her brother that she would appreciate Amazon tokens in future. However, she felt guilty for being unappreciative. Maybe we can learn something from that anecdote in my exploration journey. From nature, we learn that in the nitrogen cycle, we receive the gift of oxygen from trees and the gift is returned in the form of carbon dioxide. Insects receive nectar from flowers and they give the gift of pollination. What a wonderful example of symbiotic relationships. We can translate the insect and flowers idea into a gracious giver and a gracious receiver. Already, I'm beginning to understand why I find it easier to give than receive. But I still think that how you receive is just as important to the giver's happiness as to your own. Continuing the journey, I'm relieved when I reflect that giving does not necessarily mean giving something tangible. It could mean complimenting a friend or stranger, saying a silent prayer for someone, sending a message of appreciation, or simply giving somebody a hug although post-pandemic, a high five might be more welcome. I like the idea of giving something intangible without expecting anything in turn. We live in a consumer-led world, and I think the giving of our time is the best gift to give, and it costs nothing in financial terms. Even though I find receiving difficult, I realize that one should receive graciously, and it is something I would like to learn to do. I, it, it is definitely a work in progress. I know outwardly, I know that I outwardly give the impression of gratitude, but inwardly grind my teeth when, for example, I'm given yet another scarf. When I have so many, I don't need one in a colour I will never wear. Equally, I feel guilty about giving it away or giving it to a charity shop because I know someone has taken the time to choose it for me. Adding to my bar humbug approach, and because I am in remission from diabetes, given yet another box of chocolates feels like a slap in the face. So I'm learning that while giving feels wonderful, it only works when there is a truly grateful receiver. Allowing yourself to be a gracious receiver is a humbling experience. 
and it is truly an act of love because it offers a chance for others to give. And as you know, I find this difficult to achieve. I'm afraid I'm not a generous receiver, but I need to work on that. I need to overcome negative thoughts, be kinder, and pause and reflect. Whatever it is, the gift is an expression of friendship, support, love. This will hopefully result in greater happiness to both the giver and receiver. I was interested recently to listen to an archive episode of Something Understood on BBC Radio 4. I do these things when I can't sleep at night. And this programme featured the British journalist, writer and broadcaster, and one of the hostages in the Lebanon hostage crisis, John McCarthy. He was the United Kingdom's longest held hostage in Lebanon, where he was a prisoner for more than five years until his release in 1991. The program was about him trying to find a present for a relative who he'd last met in childhood. This was to be an imminent family get together and he wanted to buy her a present. He made such an art about trying to decide what to buy as a present for someone who was effectively a stranger that I felt quite jealous that I wasn't the recipient. He put such a lot of thought into the task and we shared his, in his enjoyment of doing this. Along the way, a number of examples were mentioned from people in history. For example, Robert Schumann's composition of the song cycle, Birithin, as a wedding present to his wife, Clara. And incidentally, Edward Elgar also wrote a piece of music as a wedding gift for his wife, Caroline. Salut d'amour, you heard it earlier in the service. Back to the BBC programme. I was fascinated by John McCarthy's thought processes relating to his task. I was mesmerised by his enjoyment of choosing the gift on his journey of many lists and side chat tracks. He bought a gift for his daughter. But sadly, we never got to hear if he'd bought a gift for his relative. Now, I feel certain, however, that in the end, he would have given his relatives something they would appreciate. I still think that in gifting to people, whether we know them well or not, we need to understand the difference between really listening and hearing. I'm thinking of the poem entitled The Art of Listening by Veronica Aronson, my cousin-in-law, in which she actively listens to nature. Ah, we're back to the lessons of nature again. How has this journey helped me? I would like to work towards a joined up mindset of listening and less of the self-centered and also to experience giving and receiving in equal measures. In conclusion, I think it's helpful to remember the words of hymn number 402. From you I receive in singing the living tradition. As it can be sung as a round, it is a good metaphor for both the nitrogen cycle in nature where insects and flowers are symbiotic. So it should be in the concepts of giving and receiving. So let it be. Of all the gifts in all the world, for love, we are grateful. 
of all the gifts in all the world. For helping hands, we are grateful. Of all the gifts in all the world, for food, we are grateful. May we remember that the best gifts don't arrive wrapped in paper or bows. For love, helping hands, food, and so much more, we are grateful. Amen. And may it be so. Be kind, be brave, be just, be merciful, be hopeful. This is how we keep the chalice flame burning until we are together again to light it anew. Words by Adam Slate. And now finally, words from the Dalai Lama. Every day, think as you wake up. Today, I am fortunate to have woken up. I am alive. I have a precious human life. I am not going to waste it. Amen.